Hey people, welcome back, Acer laptop, let me tell you the exact model, it's been taken apart and uh, I'll go through the uh, issue with it, it's an Aspire, Acer Aspire 3, A315-51 series, okay, uh, so that's the model number of the unit basically. First thing first is it's charging the battery. The amp drawer on the uh, bench power supply is taking charge. So let's prove let's pr prove this. I'll plug the battery in. Give me one set. And most importantly, the situation is that it's charging the battery, but it's it's dead. It's not switching on. That's what the problem what we have here basically. Right. Okay. So the battery is plugged in. Um, and let me see if I can get some of the bench. There it is. That's that's the set. It's 19.10. It doesn't matter. Right. I'm going to plug that in. Um, and that should, in a moment, that should jump up to about one point plus uh, amp, basically. So there you have it. 1.431 amp. The battery is charging. Okay. Uh, because I'm getting seven volt or seven point. Uh, 9 volt on the battery terminals which are here so let's just sort of confirm that for you let me get me fine fluke tip so that i'm not bridging the connection and just burning things out so your clock and data is in the middle those two pins are your charging pins towards the left uh, of the board and your ground is on the right hand side so let's sort of uh, for look, oh, I've not even turned the multimeter on. Let's put the backlight on. You can see that absolutely. I should say 8.3, right? Okay, that's fine, no problem. Fine. Next pin, third pin, fourth pin, sixth pin, seventh, eight, and nine. So, so first thing first is this drawing amp. Battery's charging. Brilliant. Okay. There's no obvious liquid damage. So I've taken the board. I had a good look at it. There's no obvious liquid damage on the actual board. But these laptops are becoming a bit of a troll these days now. Or the newer generation, I should say. Basically. And I'll explain to you why after. Okay. So the, the, the first thing first is to look at is, is that... Uh, do I have this stand? On this one, you should have the uh, 5 volt and the 3.3 volt. Uh, it'll create that without turning the laptop on, basically. So that will be available. So those are the two coils here and there uh, that sort of provides those voltages. So there we go. And there we have it. OK, what voltage we get on the uh, CMOS battery? 2.5. Now, ideally, that should be a 3 volt battery. Uh, maybe just the batteries knackered i don't have a battery ml12 i do actually i'll probably swap that because what that will do is i'll reset the cmos which means that the date and the time and all this several boot start up and shut down will happen if the battery is below certain voltage i think it's below 2.4 from the top of my head okay right so i'm quite happy to unplug the battery battery is charging fine but it's not turning on okay so say for instance let's hit the power button now the power button is not sort of it's dedicated or built in within the keyboard itself it's not a dedicated uh, power button what you normally have so there we go press again no light nothing i'll wait for a moment dead i'll press it again it kind of did i just see saw a flick hmm, maybe i'm getting a bit trolled here right okay so and the old arm draw here is this is what i'm getting basically right so let's unplug all this So the voltages are present. What could it be? There's nothing burnt. There's nothing obvious that I can see, basically. Okay, so let's go under. Let's have a look. 
let's, let's have a look at the uh, schematic basically so let me switch over let me position me it's all these messing around which I do have to get a bit wound up with there we go let's angle this properly right okay it's on a, like a flex arm that's why you see these movements like this jud this judder basically um okay so what's the issue I'll, I'll cut to the chase basically okay these excuse me language by the way these fucking keyboards that gets designed here right they're all interlinked the carbon contacts internally uh they're all interlinked okay the power button may may not be interlinked because I've not I, I haven't opened the, the 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 full entire keyboard to try and assess that, but I doubt it very much. It'll be it'll be added onto one of the other lines of those data lines for those keyboards. Okay, so if you've had a liquid spill or the keyboard decides to conk out on you, then unfortunately by tapping this power button here is not going to make any fucking difference. Your laptop will be absolutely dead. OK, and this is what's happening here at the moment. OK, I don't think it's anything else. I think it's a stupid keyboard that's faulty. That's resulting into the 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 dead laptop. So we're going to prove that. OK, so let's try and figure out what pin, which pins are the. Uh, I'm going to take this uh, first of all, let me take this rib keyboard flex off. OK, and try and establish which two pins that I need to jump okay so there'll be a switch button on one of those contact point here okay let me see if I can see I've got a micro I've got a beautiful microscope set up here but I can't because of the shortage of space I can't actually oh, I can't actually do anything absolutely nothing so I've got to move my mouse here bring this over here Pull the microscope a bit forward and all these messing around. OK, let's have a look. Let's take you to the microscope view. And my humble apologies, but uh, there's nothing I can do. OK, so let's focus. There we have it. Let me increase this into a full screen size. There we have it. Okay. So <clears throat> let's grab a tweezer. Grab this. So these pins, what you see here, okay, one of the pin will be for the power switch. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the schematic. Of course you can probe around, but on this on this type of keyboard connector you've got several other 3.3 volts as well as your power switch voltage okay so 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 you need to find the power switch switch and you need to short it to ground basically for the for the board to turn on okay so if we look back onto the uh, schematic well, I should say I've not opened up the schematic actually let's look at the schematic uh, there we have it okay so this is the schematic okay Page 20. Uh, and how I came about that to that, let me sort of show you. Go back onto page one and under page one. And my screen thing is way out of screen view. So give me one set. Let me just try and correct this. If it would allow me to correct it while I'm recording, I doubt it very much. I don't think it will. No, I don't think it will. No, it will. It won't. It won't. It won't. It's just asking about basically. I think it's locked. Let me. Ah, oh, no, of course I can. Of course I can. Just give me one sec. Let's get this. Let's get this resized properly and I'll lock it in. The open broadcast crashed. There's no image coming through, so I've had to delete. I have to start again basically. There we have it. Okay. So under page. Page um, one, what you will see is when you scroll down here, the I.O. controller, IT, IT8987, E, is, is what the key, key, keyboards are attached to. So that's page 20 here. So let's scroll down to page 20. All right. Zoom out. 
a little bit and let's get down to page 20 here we are okay and this is your keyboard section this is your backlight led keyboard backlight function we're not interested in that at the moment okay that's that's not the issue in hand we need to try and figure out why it's not turning on basically so when you let's have a look zoom into the keyboard connector it's a 28 pin keyboard connector okay so first thing first is that depending on the orientation of the body you're not quite sure which is pin one and which is pin 28 so the best way around it is just to start probing around okay um, and figure out which pin so for me i'm going to start from uh let's sort of say uh this pin here i'm going to start from here assuming that this is this is the uh pin 28 or whatever it is basically now that to my mind seems like a ground pad basically this this massive uh, pad here and what's this this is not a some sort of an inset or something like this okay so pin 28 so to my mind that the the pin next to it which is pin 27 is your power switch pin basically that's going off the schematic so let's go back onto the schematic okay if you look here pin 27 nb sw on switch on okay and this goes straight to the I.O. controller. Right, so what I'm going to do, long story short, is uh, jump those two pins, the ground pins, pin number 27 and 28, there, okay, um, and uh, let's see what happens, basically. So, I need my bench power supply plugged in, plugged back in. And let's jump those two pins, make sure that nothing else is underway. Um, okay, and see if we get any, any luck. It's a power. So look, that's on, that's on, that's connected, that's connected. Okay. No luck. So let's get rid of these tweezers. Let's find a different pair of tweezers. Let's make sure that everything else is connected. Okay. And where is the pin? Hang on. Something's not right. Just give me one sec. Right, and what I'm going to do is, I think the board's halted, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the power supply, get rid of the power, uh, remove the CMOS battery, so where's that plastic praying tool? Oh, come on, man. This, I'm going to retire for, no, I, I would like to retire, just just move on to something different. It's just, just it's, time, it's just becoming a bit fiddly um, as I'm going older. It's becoming a bit of a awkward type of a job because you're just fiddling around with this and that and then especially when you've got not no not enough space it's winding you up a little bit more right so the cmos battery's out i'm going to let the board and you didn't even get in any of that did you that's because of this stupid lack of space i have here and moving things around constantly now and that's one of one of the reasons why i've not been uploading videos recently because of that so the battery CMOS battery has been I've just flicked it out basically with a plastic praying tool okay I'm gonna let the board uh, reset just hang fire for a moment Interestingly enough, that there is a little uh, switch basically um, on the board, and uh, just trying to look for any. Okay, never mind. That's that's not priority. That okay. So let's get back to what we were doing before, right? Let's uh, get the power connected. And I am going to jump, and I tried jumping that under the microscope, and it didn't happen. So sadly, 
I'm going to have to abandon the idea of using the microscope. Ah, uh, where's those pair of tweezers gone? And I'm going to jump. Let's see if you can, if I can get that. I'm going to jump it. There we have it. All right, so we have a fan spin. It'll go on, off, on, off, on, off, and all that bullshit. It will happen, so I wouldn't worry about that. That's not the concern. Just focus on that LED, blue LED here, and we should get a display in a short while, basically. I'm going to plug in a mouse, a little USB mouse, so that I can control the unit with the USB. And we should see some display because, as I said, it's on, but it's going on, off, on, off. That's because of the battery's been taken out. So let's just wait. And there we have it. All right. Let's see what it's doing. No, we're not repairing. Come on, we're not repairing anything, basically. Right. Let's plug in a, a keyboard. So I can skip that. I've got a nice little tray under the desk. Absolutely awesome. Picked it up from Amazon for about 15 quid. It's well worth it because you can always, you know, in hide things. I use my uh, main keyboard for that space, but uh, we'll see. Right, well, it's going to diagnose. The issue is that the keyboard needs replacing. The keyboard must have suffered some sort of a liquid damage, whatever it is. And sadly, that resulted in... Uh, let me restart the device. Uh, sadly, it stopped it from working. So this is another another bullshit design that these manufacturers are coming across with, basically. What they're trying to do is just keeping the cost down uh, from their production side, but they're causing a knock-on effect on issues as such as this, basically. So if your keyboard is damaged, uh, you can't turn the laptop on unless you know somebody who's who who works with these sort of or repair you know a repairer that can do things. Look. The laptop's working fine. Now, what the customer can complain is that uh, it will turn on for about 20 seconds. It will switch off. So, so that kind of makes sense. But when I when I tried testing it, it was absolutely dead. It was totally dead, basically. It wasn't even switching on. So, sadly, there you, there we have it. I'll keep it short and simple. There we have it. Keyboard problem resulting into the fact that it's shorting the the, the power uh, the ter the pin 20. Uh, seven with the ground and as a result of that it's, it's it's not working or the trace is damaged or when you're pressing the button the carbon contacts not making a good enough contact to uh, to send that signal to the pin number 27 and drop the uh the 3.3 point alter line to zero to generate that signal for the io controller to fire up the board basically OK, because that the, the power switch is directly connected to the uh, the I.O. controller, which is on uh, on the, the uh, nine. Let me just try and sort of find the uh, model number. I'm not wiggling the wrong mouse. What an idiot. Uh, go back on. Uh, no, right. Okay. Pin 20. So if you look, if you look here, let me just switch you over to the uh, not the uh, 4K yet. If you look here. Right, so it says pin 27, then that goes to the, these numbers are, are, are pages. So remember, these, these numbers are pages basically here. Okay, so this is going to page 22, and this is actually going to the, the IO controller basically. There's page 21, 22, and there you have it the ECKBC IO controller, which is the IT8987E. And this 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 3.3 volt pin, or 3 volt, I should say, is going in directly into that basically. Now, if you look here, See this. So there should be an input somewhere. Let me just find that for you. I've managed to sort of find that the uh, pin is, is just on the right hand side actually. Somewhere I've seen it before. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So NBS W on and that's the that's the uh, twenty what you see that was on the other side of the uh, page bit the other page basically so when you see these arrows these arrows are input this is output it's obvious and then you'll have the, you'll have a bi bi-directional data basically so for example this what you see here 
these these uh, bio-directional uh, data basically. So they'll be they'll be sig sending signals both ways basically. So output, input, and bio-directional. So there there you have it. It's not gone off. The laptop's not gone off. Let me switch back into okay. Laptop's not gone off. It's still on. Um, and uh, you know, so now I've got to try and uh, fart source a keyboard. Now the other fucking problem is that uh, these are all like uh, mold, not molded, but like plastic type of a uh, uh, um, molding. You know that they've done basically. Um, and then even when you take the keyboard off, there'll be another um, molding in between the key keys themselves, basically. So those tracks, those little tracks, will have little plastic type of uh, these sort of things to hold the keyboard in place. So effectively what that means is that you can pick up the keyboard for silly money, but if you've got to replace the whole palm rest uh, due to the issue with the keyboard, uh, that could cost you silly money, silly amount of money. So either way, you know, it's just an absolute shit design basically. So there, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Have fun. That's all, um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now, and peace.